Look into my eyes. What do you see? No, 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 I don't mean the handsomeness. Let's put aside the physical beauty and focus on something intangible. What do you see? Exactly. Wisdom and geniusness. And geniusness is a word, I can assure you. So the genius woke up this morning and came up with a wonderful plan for today's episode. He thought that he's going to make the mining gadget, go look for vibranium in the nether, use it in order to make the atomic disassembler, go to the end and kill the ender dragon, and in the meantime he can get some ender air bottles in order to get the flugel tiara, so that he would be able to go and get the unobtainium in order to make the digital miner. This one. It was a genius plan, right? The only thing that I had to do was to fight the Guardian of Gaia. Once. And with our OP armor, this should not have been a problem. The only issue is when I wanted to craft the Gaia pylon, I noticed that there has been a change in the recipe. We're going to need something called Alf Steel Pylon, which needs Alf Steel Nuggets. And one ingot of Alf Steel is going to require two mana pools. We need four pylons, so we need four mana pools. And we don't have enough mana. So until we get enough mana, maybe we should start focusing on other stuff. And I just remembered that today I spend a lot of time trying to make a stupid bridge and still I'm ender pearling. Anyways, I was hoping that until we get enough mana, we might as well focus. What is this? Oh, it's a drowned. Did he drop it? No. Anyhow, as I was saying, maybe until we get enough mana, we should focus on some automations that we have to do eventually and I've been just lazy to do them. The most important one is plastic from industrial foregoing. I have gone through the recipe and it seems making plastic has not changed since 1.12, so it should be relatively easy to set up. As usual, we're going to have fluid extractors and we're going to set them up like so. You need RF? Since when? It is perfectly fine, we're going to automate everything using Xnet, so we just need connectors anyway. So for those of you who don't know, the way that you get plastic from industrial foregoing is very simple. You're going to need fluid extractors. You can only have one, but since we might need a lot of plastic, I'm using four, because it's faster. Then you need to put a log in front of it so that these guys will start collecting latex. Yeah, it seems that if we hook them up to power, they're going to work slightly better. Okay, that is good. And ever since industrial foregoing came out, you guys have been telling me that the best log in order to get latex from is acacia. So I did buy some saplings from the market and we're going to use them. If you look at the recipes, acacia gives you four millibuckets, the rest are two. Dark oak is one. Now that we're extracting the latex, we need to start processing it in a latex processing unit. Shocking, I know. And in the recent update, in order to make it, we actually need a bucket of latex. So I have to wait here for a while. We did manage to get buckets of latex and I made a latex processing unit. And I moved our system from here to over there because I thought I can make it more compact and probably hide the wiring as best as I can. The only changes that I made is that I did make a block placer from cyclic and if we give it logs, we turn you on, it will place it for us. And we also have an ender chest which is hooked up to our ME system. I'm going to put the latex processing unit over here. We're going to make a channel for fluids. We extract the latex from the fluid extractors and insert it into the latex processing unit. Now you should work, right? Yes, very good. It's getting the latex. I just remembered that this guy is also going to require water. So I did put a sink. And again, we're going to extract water and insert it in here. And if we give it power, you should give us tiny dry rubber. Very good. I did bring a crafter from RF Tools. We're going to give it a recipe in order to craft the dry rubber. And over here, I need another channel for items. So you're going to extract tiny dry rubber from the latex processing unit. You're going to insert it into the crafter. And if we give it power, we will get dry rubber. Then we need to extract the dry rubber and insert it into a smelter so that we would get plastic. And we just put the ender chest on top and put you on auto eject. I turned it off. On. I think it went into our system. Yes, we have plastic. Final thing that we have to do is that we're going to hook up a crate into the block placer down here, like so. And if I give you logs, you will get them. Very good. We are basically done. I was checking the recipes and it seems latex has other uses in a dissolution chamber in order to make different types of upgrades. And also dark glass. Nice. Anyway, plastic is not the only application for latex, so we need to have a bit of a reserve. And I just made a mess, I have to empty the water. So we're going to have an ender tank and we're going to give it a priority of, I don't know, 5? So that this guy gets full of latex and then we will get plastic. And for the moment, we're just going to put you over here so that I don't forget that you're for latex. Alright guys, the setup is now complete and I did try to cover it as much as possible. I also have a small chicken farm over here so that we will get eggs. And now that we have access to plastic as well as latex, let us see what we can craft because I want to make some machines and it seems we need to make the dissolution 
solution chamber. And thankfully it does not have a stupid recipe. Good. I think to start with industrial foregoing, we're going to build two machines. One of them is going to be the marine fisher, which requires a simple machine frame and you do it in a dissolution chamber. So I did bring all the ingredients and you have to do it manually? Yeah, it seems that you have to do the recipe manually. Okay, we give you latex. What will you do? very slowly okay we did get the machine frame but the issue is how would you automate it? oh you can automate it it does not have to be in the correct order okay that's good this is not going to be the permanent place for this guy but we're going to put it over here for the moment and i think i just have to put a chest on top or no you do not auto eject okay it's fine i just wanted a little bit of fish and see if we can get enchantment books and yes we do get enchanted books very good. The second machine that we're going to make from industrial foregoing is a mob slaughter factory. Because I honestly need pink slime. The way that you get pink slime in industrial foregoing is that you need to put a mob in front of a mob slaughter factory that will give you liquid meat and pink slime. The issue is the range is garbage. So let us try to make a range add-on of plus four and I think that should be enough. And if I put you in... The range is good. I know what you're thinking, Lush, you don't even have a mob farm. How are you going to put mobs in front of the factory? I do have an answer for you. Garbage. If we put down piles of garbage, we will get rats, we're going to slaughter them, and we're going to get pink slime. It's just that where do we want to make it? Yeah, I think we can just put everything inside the mountain and then hide it. Oh, we have a new guy. Hello. What did you drop? On breaking 6, protection 6. After covering the ground with garbage, I noticed that we are not getting any rats. And then I had to go to the wiki and notice that, yes, it has to be dark so that we will get rats. So this place has to be covered completely. And that is a very important functionality because we should be able to turn on and off the farm whenever we want. So I'm going to install some redstone lamps over here and later on we will hook it up to redstone. How do I get out? We are getting liquid meat and we're getting pink slime. And both of them are used in a dissolution chamber in order to craft stuff. So I'm thinking that we're going to have two more dissolution chambers over here. One of them will be used for pink slime and the other one for liquid meat. Can we still configure you? Yes. I did something which crashed my game. It was nothing too serious. I just had to restart the client. But you cannot connect a connector from Xnet to a tank from Mechanism. You can put it like this. You just can't right click on the tank itself. So instead we're going to use fluid storage tanks from Cyclic. And over here we got our first pink slime. I thought it's going to require water but apparently not. So if I cut you off, will you give me another pink slime? You do. Weird. Because here it says water. That is perfectly fine by me. Oh, it does not require water. It gives you water. Okay. I wanted to get pink slime so that we would be able to make the stonework factory. Unfortunately, in order to make the advanced machine frame, we need netherite. We're not going to need a stupid amount of netherite, but the issue is I don't have that many ancient debris left. I only have these two. But in the meantime, I just want to make some speed upgrades. Each one needs one bucket of latex. That's a lot. And I'm guessing the first question is, can we put speed upgrades inside the extractors? Yes. In that case, let us also try and make the tier 2 speed upgrade because we need a lot of latex. Oh, they don't stack anymore. Weird. So this is the normal speed. And this is with tier 1 speed upgrade. And this one is with tier 2. It's crazy. Just before we start going to the nether, I want to set up one more garden clutch over here. And this one is going to be for cactus. And the main reason that we want a lot of cactus is that if we use an alchemy catalyst under a mana pool, we will get slime balls. And the reason that we're going to need a huge supply of slime balls is that we need to make crystallized obsidian from cyclic. And yes, yes, I noticed that it's going to need a chorus fruit or a wither rose. The ender orbs in this mod pack break really fast. Can I enchant it and get unbreaking? Yeah, unbreaking is good. We have found one. Yeah, only one. I did notice that if you're wearing the Aldermodium armor, you don't take any damage from lava. There is a mineshaft in the nether. There is a high chance that in this mod pack they have changed the spawning rates and where it spawns. So maybe if we go under a warped forest, we're going to be more lucky. Maybe we should just accept the fact that it's rare. We just take the ones that we found. Industrial Forgoing was a simple mod, it improved the quality of our lives, but now it's just a pain. <laughs> Cause for the simple machine frame, you need latex. But for the advanced machine frame, you need pink slime. And I'm guessing it's a very good thing that we started automating it. Unfortunately, we are very low on diamonds, so we can only afford two of them. Do you need water and lava to run? Okay, you do need water and lava to run and you're not consuming it. That is good. And just out of curiosity, will you also give me silicon or that's a no? 
No, you don't. So we're going to use one of them just to get sand and the other one to get glass. And those are the material that I'm short of. Now let us try and focus on getting some slime balls so that we would be able to get crystallized amber. You can put the alchemy catalyst or the conjuration catalyst under a mana pool and they will have different functions. The alchemy catalyst is going to give us a lot of slime balls from cactus. There's also a conjuration catalyst which doubles some of the items. I have never used this functionality from cyclic so for the moment we're just going to set it up over here so that we will see how it's going to work this one is a melter and this one solidifies and the first thing that we need to melt is some magma blocks every two of them is going to give us one bucket that's not much for the crystallized amber we're going to need magma fire charges redstone blocks and gold do you work does the order matter yes okay so why did we need crystallized amber well in order to make any sort of charm from cyclic you're going to need it the recipes have been changed and since we are going to fight the guardian of gaia this one is going to be useful for us. This is called the Wither Charm, which is new. And the main reason that I personally wanted to get the Crystallized Obsidian is to get the Engraved Thunder, which calls Thunder. And whenever we get a Plague Doctor nearby, we can convert him into Black Death. And of course, all of that being said, we also need a few Wither Roses. I was hoping that we can use Snow Golems in order to get Wither Roses, but unfortunately you cannot shear a pumpkin with Mana Steel Shears. So I had to make a mess in order to find Iron. This is very weird, you see, it's not working. Although I'm not exactly sure if this idea is going to work, but we are going to try it. Come on, form. I'm not doing this fast enough. Okay, are we getting any? Yes, yes, yes. We only need one. We did manage to get 15 Wither Roses. I don't know what happened to the 16th one, but we also got the Nether Star. Let me try and get one more, and then we go home. Yeah, we're going to plant it over here and remove the inferior. We have a bunch of crystallized amber and let us try to get some crystallized obsidian. And this is the reason that we needed with the roses. So you need to melt down slime <laughs> for some reason. And then it's obsidian, amber and with the rose. Oh, we got it. Nice. You can see the wither rose inside. There is a plague doctor over there. We can get black death. I did make a mob imprisonment tool and we're going to get the engraved thunder. So if I hit you with lightning, will you be black death? No. Are you the wrong guy? I went to the wiki and it seems that was the correct way of summoning Black Dead. It didn't work on him maybe because it was a traveling plague doctor and not a resident one and we have to find one in a village. Anyways, I wanted the Black Death in order to get plague beasts as pets. But we will do that later on. We also have a decent supply of mana. We also have two mana pools over here. So maybe we can get into mythical botany and see how far we can advance. But before doing that, let us get a few quality of life improvements. There's a diamond anvil from Cyclic which will repair items using energy. And if that is the case, we don't need mending anymore. I think. Are you repairing? You're not doing a great job. Oh, you need to turn it on. Okay, it's not the worst. Another item that I have noticed that we have in the pack is called a tool belt, which can also be upgraded with belt pouches. I think we can make two, right? So the way that the tool belt works is really neat. If you hold shift and right click, you will get two inventory slots and you can put your tools inside. If you put it inside an anvil and add a pouch, you will get three slots. And of course, one more pouch gives you four. And the good thing is you can put your tools inside, wear it as a bubble, and just by assigning one key, you can choose the different tools that you need. It's very good for inventory management. It's not going to be super useful because you always need to have a sword and a paxel on you, but if you have a lot of tools, it's going to be useful. Okay, so let us get back to Mythical Botania and see how far we can progress. This is an add-on to Botania and you can find information on it in your Lexica Botania. And the reason that we want to get into it is because we need to make Gaia pylons to summon the Guardian of Gaia, and for that, we need an alf steel pylon. So basically what we need to do is to get alf steel. And the way that you make alf steel is by making a mana infuser. Okay, that's not that difficult. We need to craft a fair bit of runes. So first thing that we need is a rune of air and I'm out of mana steel. Then we need to start making the rune of winter, autumn, summer and spring. Of course, I did make two of each and every one. Maybe we need them later. The final rune is something new and it is called the rune of Asgard. We have a slight shortage of diamonds. Okay, 18 is good. It's better than zero. It requires a bajillion items, rune of air, pride and autumn, one netherite ingot and the rod of Bifrost. On a very positive note, it does not require a crazy amount of mana to craft. I'm happy. Yes, rune of Asgard. Oh, and the structure is going to require Shimmer Rock, which requires Bifrost, and I just used my Rod of the Bifrost, and the worst part of my life is that we are out of Ender Pearls. Hello! 
Are you coming over? I should come over. And you fell down. We got one pearl and 10 fragments. That's okay, we can go home. I'm guessing it's exactly set up like the one that we use in order to make terra steel. Four blocks of gold go over here and the plate goes on top. Maybe. I gave it a spark. If we drop the ingredients, it should consume two mana pools and give us one half steel. No. Oh, the reason that it's not working is that it's requiring a dominant spark. So let us try this one more time and see if it works. I hope it does. Yes, it does. Oh, no. <laughs> I picked it up. You can't right click on it. That is the problem. We just wasted a lot of mana, but it's okay. We will get one ingot. Yes. The first one, I think we need one more. And I think we do have enough for the second one. That is good. Very good. Very good. That will give us 18 nuggets. And it is enough in order to make four Gaia pylons. But the issue is, now we need to get some Terra Steel. The pylon that we need to make is going to require a gas tier. So I had to come to the Soul Sand Valley to hunt some ghasts. We don't have infinity, so every shot should count. It's just that they don't really spawn in an ideal location. Oh, here is good. You drop the rest. It's fine. I think we have enough. For having the Guardian of Gaia fight, we need a relatively flat area. So let me prepare something and I'll be right back. I think I'm decently prepared in order to have the Guardian of Gaia fight. We have the Terra Steel Ingot, Speed 2, Strength 2, and Instant Health. I also made an Emerald Apple, which is going to give us Strength, Regeneration, Absorption, Fire Resistance, and Resistance. We also have the Superfood from the Rats mod, and we are also going to make a Wither Charm. And just in case, can we get Unbreaking? Yes. And I think with that, we should be ready for the Guardian of Gaia fight. We also have decent armor and a decent sword. Let's see how it goes. I know it's going to go terribly wrong, but we will know. He is doing a decent amount of damage, but we're absorbing it, so that's good. Since when do you summon creepers? Oh, and by the way, apparently if you eat the superfood and then press F4, the weird screen will go away. Someone told me that in the comments, so I'm very thankful. He died. Nice. So where are the spirits? Oh, they're here. I think the emerald apple is actually really neat, because we still have the buffs. So should we try and have one more fight? We have enough mana. I think. I know that I'm being very greedy, but having more Gaia spirits is good. I should have used the time in order to make the rod of the unstable reservoir, but I kind of forgot. That would have been very useful when he summons mobs. You see, we get the weird effect. I press F4 and it's gone. It seems that I got the plague. One more hit. Thank you. This is going so well. Do we have more mana? We should have a little bit here, right? Yes. I did use the last of our mana in order to make two more Terra Steel ingots. I also had to use a little bit of mana from my band of mana, so we have far less in it. I did upgrade my sash, I made the unstable reservoir, and we're going to try if we can beat the second tier. Maybe I'm going to be super lucky and I'm going to get the Ring of Odin. I'm already dying. <laughs> That's not good. For some reason, I'm alive, and let us see what are we going to get. I'm slightly disappointed, but it's fine. We are approaching the end of the episode, but there are a few things that I want to do before we wrap up. One of them is, we need to upgrade our mana spreaders. I know that there are much better ways of generating mana, you are empty, but for the moment, none of them are available to us. So we're going to have four Gaia mana spreaders, and we are left with five spirits. So next episode, when we defeat the Ender Dragon, we can make the tiara. We had this on 4 seconds. Can we reduce it to 2? I think we can. No, it seems you cannot go lower than 4 seconds because these guys also have a resting period. Oh, I broke it. But it is perfectly fine because later on we're going to have a blaze farm and we're going to give them blaze rods. One more thing that I want to do is to try and find vibranium. We need to make the mining gadget and we're out of diamonds. I did process some of the ores, so we should have diamonds. Yes. And here is the mining gadget. And just out of curiosity, how do you work? Weird. Pawa also has a battery. I have no idea how far I can upgrade it, but this is blazing. This is niotic. This one is spirited. And I can also get nitro? Yes. 140 million. Oh, you can put it inside the reactor and it will charge up. Nice. I'm just hoping that if we have it in our inventory, it will charge the mining gadget. Are you? Yes. No. Oh, you need to sneak right click. Now it works. This is a new biome. Warped desert. So your cactus? It gives you cyan dye. Okay. We need one ingot in order to get the potion of vibranium site and I just noticed this structure. <laughs> what is inside? Tons of gold. 
Anyhow, I was going to say that according to you guys, I can find vibranium in the crimson forest between Y level 80 and 121. I don't think vein mining is going to pay off. Should we just look for it like this? I have a feeling that that one is vibranium. We will check. That is vibranium. Good. We can get it. It does take a while and you have to be fairly close. We do have our dabbling, so we can get two ingots, right? I'm going to use one of those ingots in order to make the powder, so that we can make the potion of vibranium site, and I'm going to use the second one in order to make the atomic disassembler. And now that we have the potion, let us look for more. Do you work? Oh, you do work! It's just that they're incredibly rare. And with the atomic disassembler, we can harvest it, right? Yes, I did find another one. Oh, we found two! I have found three more. You know, I did say that they seem to be rare, but whenever you find one, there's more nearby. You see, that's actually five of them. There's even two of them next to each other. By just using two potions, I did manage to get 29 vibranium ore. And since we can dabble it, I think we can upgrade our armor and have a lot more left. The question is, do you need to be repaired? No. So ladies and gentlemen, vibranium armor, which is a huge improvement on that yellow stupid thing that we were wearing. I look cool. And in total, we're getting 1000 armor points. Ah, it doesn't really feel that you have 1000 armor points because a zombie hits you and you will lose a heart. Yeah, a creeper just exploded and I lost 9.5. I do admit that it was a boss creeper, but still. Anyway guys, before wrapping up the episode, I just wanted to address a very small comment that I saw on episode 2. I'm a little bit ahead in recording, so I just saw the comments. Someone was telling me that Lush, you're speedrunning the pack. No, I don't speedrun the pack, it's been 2 days, that's 48 hours, and we're on episode 5. And what that basically means is that I have spent almost an average of 10 hours on every episode. Therefore, even though I'm running really fast, I'm not a speedrunner, I just edit the videos. That's it, I try to leave the boring parts out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.